Hey everybody, welcome to hobby break number three. And today we are actually going to paint something. So you haven't watched any of this series yet, take a look at the links in the description. You can get kind of caught up to where we're at. So far we've just been kind of preparing to get to this point. Uh, as always, I will link to some other folks' videos that are relevant to what I'm currently doing. I'm going to link to uh, three or four different folks who just basically do how to paint a thing. Uh, one of the cool things about YouTube and the internet in general is like, how do I paint the Lord Celestand on a Star Drake? Well, there's probably a handful of videos on how somebody did that. So I'm gonna have some links down there. Uh, particularly, look at the uh, Warhammer TV one. That's actually made by Games Workshop. And they put out a very uh, good videos in terms of how to use their products at least and get started with the painting. And one of the models that I've been working with, they've got a great video, which I'll link directly to that one about how to do it, kind of doing their, their thing. So uh, let's jump into it. I'll do a couple of sort of housekeeping mentions here based on the previous video. And then we'll just jump into painting our white dwarf. Okay, I wanna talk about two things to kind of catch us up. Uh, the first thing, as I did mention metal miniatures at the end of my last uh, Hobby Break video, and I hadn't quite worked with any, but now I have, and I got these uh, Guild Ball characters here. Uh, I will be reviewing Guild Ball soon. And this is a metal miniature there, and I can't remember this uh, fellow's name here, but these are all metal. Uh, this guy is called the Tenderizer. I do remember his name, and you can see he's hitting the ground with this giant sort of meat tenderizer. I did actually flock these two with some, some uh, GW grass, I guess you'd call it. Uh, so these, I just want to comment on, were relatively difficult to work with. Not all of them were difficult to work with. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones that came out in the end. Uh, not great lighting in this position, but you can see he's this big butcher guy and he's jumping through the grass and he's going to play soccer and also try to chop you into bits. Uh, now, some of these were very difficult because, and I think it's not necessarily indicative of the metal, but the metal certainly doesn't help, but you have very small joins on a few of these Guild Ball figures. So I had to re-glue a couple sometimes and I actually lost like a little knife uh, from this gal here. Uh, but overall, I'm relatively pleased. It just, I would know going in at least to Guild Ball and maybe metal miniatures in general, I would want to work with uh, plastic a whole bunch first, just so you're kind of, uh, you know, familiar with everything. Now I'm gonna show you my favorite one. And this is the dog. <laughs> I don't know why that one is my favorite. It's just very subtle. And you get the little brown nose there and the eyeball and everything, but I really like that little dog. Okay, I just wanna talk with that and just kinda of give you my general thoughts on that. The other thing uh, that somebody had pointed out to me was this concept of Xenothal priming. I talked about priming last time and I usually just sprayed it like all black or all white. Now this fella here, he's sort of like the big boss for Shadows of Brimstone. He's called Bilal. He's got these nice cool wings there. And I tried it with this guy because he's really big. And so what I did was I spray painted him uh, with all black primer. He was all black. I let that dry. And then I sprayed white primer from like a 45 degree angle uh, degree angle up. So just kind of around generally. So it would just kind of fall. So it was it was very white from the top. So I would spray down here and then kind of bending out and going around. Now I've seen other methods where you actually get a gray primer and you kind of start that one sort of like halfway around. So you do all black and then a little bit of gray and then white kind of directly on top. So it kind of pre-shades it for you and I thought it was kind of interesting because he's got um, you know, kind of a different angle to him where he's kind of casting his own shadow because he's so big. And so these areas are kind of automatically darker even though I painted the same, you know, orange and gold and the crimson colors on him there. So I thought that was very effective. Uh, I'm definitely going to try that in the future. I haven't tried that with anything else other than this fella here. But that is a very, very cool and quick and easy method to kind of pre-build some color and shading. I thought that was very cool. So let's jump into what we're doing now. Uh, the next thing is, well, this is the guy we're going to paint. This is the white dwarf, and he is sort of a, I guess you'd call him kind of a commemorative figure. Uh, they rebooted their white dwarf magazine, uh, Games Workshop did, and so every once in a while they will come out with a new version of this miniature. Now this is the same as there's another miniature out there called Unforged. This is exactly the same, <laughs> but it's like, well, if you painted it the other way, he doesn't count as a white dwarf. You've got to paint him with the white hair and stuff. So whatever. I didn't have that miniature, uh, so I thought it was cool. And this one's a little bit simpler to paint, so I figured, let me do this one. Now, I was going to do the Retributor or one of them that we primed last time, 
but I figured out that I could cheat because with my uh, Stormcast, you, they have this special gold spray that you can spray and it basically paints the 80% of the model because they're always all gold. So that wouldn't be very interesting. Basically spray it gold, do some metal and some blue highlighting, and then he's kind of done. So that's not really very cool. But I'll kind of do that as we go too. And I've got a couple of other models here. These are my some blood, Bloodborns. This one actually here came with the White Dwarf magazine. Uh, but I'll kind of just show these as I go. But in terms of the video editing, we're just gonna kind of focus here on the White Dwarf here. And I do want to make a quick mention here. I've got uh, what paints I'm using because that's very important now. Uh, so we've got the Reaper box here. Now the Reaper kit doesn't come with all of these. Uh, my friend Ben Waxman was kind enough to send me uh, several of his bottles that he no longer uses. Um, but I do have a video about what's in here. And the technique that I'm using here is gonna be, this is what I've always been really using here is what, how they kind of teach you to paint in the kit. Now I have a, again a link to the video uh, at the bottom here so you can get an idea of what's in that kit and how they tell you. But the method that Reaper shows in there is not really very different at all from, you know, if you look at the uh, videos with Games Workshop paints uh, and even on the Warhammer TV, there's, you kind of, you base coat it, you wash and shade it, you go back and do maybe a layer or two and then you do some highlights, some dry brushing, and then maybe touch up some real fine details, you know, like a little eyeball or something. Uh, and then you do that from there. Now, most of the painting videos, the how to paint videos, are gonna be using uh, Citadel or Games Workshop colors. I am not, I'm gonna use a, probably a little bit of the Reaper, but I try to stick to this folk art. Now this is really cheap. You can see the amount of paint that you get here just in comparison to a Reaper bottle there. And then even here's a little Citadel Games Workshop bottle. So the cost of this is actually even cheaper uh, than these bottles, I think maybe not every single bottle, but most of them are cheaper and you get a lot more paint. You do have to thin these just slightly more, but I mean, that makes the paint last longer anyway. I do have these Citadel shades. Uh, these are awesome. I don't know that I would ever paint without these. Um, anyway, so that's what I'm using here. And now the other videos will show you step-by-step, step, they'll be like, use this color. And then they'll use a slightly different color and then they'll use this other color. So it's like, okay, I gotta buy like three different kinds of blue when you can maybe do mixing or do you have to get it exactly right? So I'm gonna be kind of very amateur in terms of the color differentials, I guess. I mean, I'll, I'm definitely gonna mix colors, but a lot of them are like, you know, these step-by-step, -step, you know, use these exact paints from Games Workshop. Even in some of the tutorials that aren't painting Games Workshop miniatures will be like, these are the exact Citadel paints I used. And I think that's great. And you can certainly use that and say like, oh, you use ultramarine blue? Well, I'm gonna use here true blue. That's close enough. And so you can just kind of color match in that case. Or even not. So for example here, let's find the White Dwarf little guide here. So this is the White Dwarf magazine. And it gives you kind of the colors that they use for the pants and the beard and all that stuff. And even for uh, this, the Bloodborne guy there. So you can go and look here and find all kinds of reference material. You don't necessarily have to go on the internet and find, hey, how do I paint this? You can just go and find a piece of art or an image there. I mean, this is a, that's a miniature. So if I wanted to paint one of these Stormcast uh, adjudicators or no, not adjudicator, prosecutor, uh, you know, and then I can just go, okay, that part needs to be gold, that part needs to be blue and I'm good to go. Now, one other thing that I wanted to talk about here, you can see a nice zoomed in close up of the white dwarf and it's got a little bit of extra light on it. Now, if I back out slightly, you can see we're actually looking through here a magnifying glass. Now my wife got this for me as a, a birthday present at Michael's, which is an art store. And I think it was on sale, but she got it for just over 20 bucks. I don't think you necessarily need to get this right away, but as you start to paint more and I'm 40 and I'm not really that old, I don't feel old, but it does help the eye strain if you're trying to get in uh, little details here. And this guy isn't super detailed, but you can certainly find other miniatures that this is gonna be helpful with. Now, the other thing I've been told is you could use um, like 4X reading glasses. Now I wear glasses, so I haven't messed with that, but that's an opportunity for folks who don't wanna have this kind of thing in the way is uh, you know you can just get magnifying glasses and wear them. Uh, the nice thing about this also is it's got a light built in, so it adds a little bit of extra light there. So I'm gonna try to do it through this because it does kind of show the detail a little bit better. So here's my palette, and this is just an old Tupperware thing that I've had for ages. Uh, do go and Google a wet palette. I haven't done that because I usually try to finish everything in one session, but uh, go and Google what a wet palette is. I'm gonna look into it myself, uh, but I'm not gonna do that for now. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the skin. 
So we're going to go ahead and just do a little bit of this here. Square, square a little bit of that out there. You probably can't see it because it's a mess of color. And then we're going to go ahead and thin it just a little bit. And I'm going to get a good brush here. Not too little, uh, but not too big. Now let's see if these come up on camera. They may not. So you can see this guy here. I believe this is a double zero, and this one might be a zero or a one. I'm going to go ahead and just use the one for now. But if you get really tiny detail, you can get these really small brushes. And I definitely would recommend that. Uh, do that. So you're going to have to just dip this in your water a little bit there. I dip that over here. And then this one, you got to thin out a little bit, probably more than the uh, Games Workshop and also the Reapers there. So I'm going to get a nice little thing. I'm just going to use this straight out because that's what I've been using for uh, my other dwarves. So we're going to go ahead and just apply that here uh, to his feet and then also tuck it back in here uh, to his shoulder there. Now this is very awkward for me, so I'm probably gonna mess up and have to go over these a few, but we're gonna go ahead and just kind of touch in a little bit of skin there, like so, and not worry about too much. We can touch up the details later. This is super awkward, I'm sorry. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now he is wearing pants, which I messed up there. So I got a little bit on his pants. That's okay, this stuff is gonna dry, and then you're gonna paint over it. Okay, you can see I've got the skin down in there. I've got that tucked back in there. Let's see if I missed anything. Uh, a little bit on the shoulder there. I'll go ahead and touch that up. I just wanted to interject quickly. I'm always going to be constantly uh, putting this brush back in here, getting it off, and then wiping it off over here on a paper towel, trying to keep it clean. So you can keep it clean the whole process during your paint uh, timing. And then at the end, you can just really scrub this out, get it cleaned off. There's some special soaps and things that you can get. Uh, and then you just kind of make sure it's very clean. There's no color left anywhere on the bristles or on the stem here or anything like that. And then the brushes should last you a while. I've painted with all these brushes several times now and don't do anything real special. Now we're going to do the hair. So I've just got a little bit bigger of a brush here. Uh, it's kind of loaded up pretty heavy. Now I did a mixture of steel gray and just white on here just so it's not directly white, just kind of base it out a little bit. Now I'm just going to kind of go over this and just kind of give it a real thick uh, base coat here and get the, the beard going here as well. And we'll also get this little ponytail back here. Just being real free with it, you know. I'm, it's it, once you paint a little bit, even I'm even using this big brush here. I'm not going to end up getting it on uh, the skin. And if, if you do, you just go back and then you go over it. Because here you can see on the front, I had little splashes of the skin on there. You can probably kind of see it there. I may do another layer on top of that uh, with this sort of whitish gray, um, and even here. So I'll just go in and touch those up. So it's not a big deal if you make a mistake. Um, it, until you get to the end and then you want to, you know, you want to be finished. You don't have to keep going over everything. So there we've got the hair. And so you can see he's starting to, to form up a little bit there. Now next we're going to do is pants. And then the book tells you to do kind of like screamer pink or something. So I'm going to grab this magenta, maybe darken it up just a little bit. You can see I already screwed up. I'm going to do that foot again. Very awkward doing it on this camera, I got to say. So I'm going to go in here and do this. Just kind of touch up the pants and I'll go back in and fix that foot there. So while that's drying, you can actually see I'm probably going to do a second coat of that because it's you can kind of still see the white coming through there. So while that's drying, and when I before I go back and fix the skin, I'm going to go ahead and just paint on this. This is sort of a, a steelish blue. I got that true blue and mix in some black with it just to kind of darken it up. So I'm going to paint this, this statue here and take a look at it that way. And I think I'm getting a hang of where to position everything so I can see. So you can see, you still get the detail there of all of the bumps and ridges of the miniature. I'm painting this on watered down, so it's not like thick globs of paint that I'm, you know, putting on here. It's watered down. You kind of tint everything because that's what color is. It's really tint. It's light that's coming through. You know, you're not painting it black. You're making it look like it's black because nothing is really a color. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do this, and I'll finish this up. Now one little trick I do is I can get some just a, some bunch of water on my brush and paint that over here and it'll just kind of clear off any of that paint that was sitting there in that spot. And I can even just wipe it off, you know, with a paper towel and then or let it dry and just paint over it, just so it doesn't get thickened up. And then because the more layers of paint you add, the more you're going to hide all of that detail. So I'm going to go in and fix up some of the skin on the hands, which I also missed there. So you can see I've got a second layer there on the pants and that's going to, it's still drying, but that's going to look a little bit better now. Let's go ahead and we're going to paint here these two axes and then I'm going to get in there and do that belt, which I should have done 
<laughs> before I start doing the pants. Uh, it's just, sometimes, like I said in the previous videos, before you actually put the thing together, you want to paint the individual pieces. So I probably could have painted that belt before I, you know, I glued that face and beard on there because now I've got to get under there and tuck in there. But you know, like stuff like that that's in the middle there, I just kind of get in some color and you know, do as best I can. I'm not going to go in there and try to highlight details that are going to be covered up 90% of the time he's on the table. The reason that I chose these folk arts over some of the other hobby, whoops, brands, he's fine, uh, is they have their metallics here. You can see this is a metallic, and then they also have, you know, a multi-surface, or they have an acrylic. And those are the different styles um, that they use. And so I'd usually mostly the multi-surface and then also the metallic. Some of the other, um, you know, hobby paints that are at like just the art store that aren't like a bones or a or a, you know a gw the other ones don't have a metal a good you know metals and in, in golds and in metallics so this folk art brand does and so that's why i chose them to use along with you know using reapers and gw stuff so we're going to use this uh, just this gun metal here on the steel the metallics i should say for folk art they kind of come a little bit watered down anyway i still water them down uh, they're a little bit thinner and they do take some work to put on having used some of the metallics from reapers and what i've seen from uh, games workshop there these aren't as good as those metals and the metallics from those companies but you know what you get a boatload in a tub and you know you can use them so and they work and you know frankly once they get in the on the battlefield and so on uh, then you know you're not really going to notice so you can see a little bit of brushwork there which isn't very good but We'll, we'll fix that up here. So you want to kind of, you know, keep control of your paint while you're doing this too. And that has a lot to do with how much uh, you water it down. I'm going to make this part metal too, I guess. Sometimes you make that, you know, the little handle wood or black or something or gold. Um, and so the one thing to note is you want to make the paint nice and thin. You don't want to make it too runny or else it's going to run all over the place. And, you know, like if I made this, these pants too runny, it will start dripping down and running all over the spots that I just painted. So you just have to kind of get the hang of it. And those Reaper paints that come with that Reaper Learn to Paint kit, they start off nice. You just maybe add like a little bit of water to those and then, um, you know, they're good to go. You don't have to add a bunch and they're nice and thin already. And same with the, uh, the GW stuff. And it's going to depend on uh, base the different colors are going to be different. So a GW green is going to be different than a, a Vallejo green and so on. And, you know, so in the GW green is going to be different than the GW yellow. They're going to be, have different consistencies because that's just the nature of those pigments. So I'm going to go AFK from the camera to try to get at that little belt in there. Okay. So you can see I've got a decent base coat on everything here. I've got the statue. I went and touched up the hair and a little bit different parts of the skin and you know out of the metal here so i've got a decent base coat so this is typically what you do you could i mean you could you could leave this i mean if you get one of those pre-paints like in some board games like a beige knight the board game or something or claustrophobia it's going to look about this i mean about this quality maybe not as good i mean i'm not puffing myself up but just those pre-paints aren't always that great uh, so now we've done a base coat you've kind of touched up all the areas everything's got some color you, you've you've covered the primer up uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a wash. And so there's two washes that I'm considering using here. The first one is the Magic Sauce. This is Nuln Oil. This is from Citadel. And the other one that I'm going to use is Reichland, uh Flesh Shade. And as you can see by the name, it's Flesh Shade. Another thing I'll actually use sometimes, and this guy works really good on doing like gold and, and metals, is Karaborg Crimson. It's kind of a reddish tint. I use it on the uh, that Bilal I showed you earlier on some of the gold pieces. It makes the gold look very interesting. Uh, the other one that's nice here is this Agrax Earth Shade. Um, you know, so these shades from Citadel are amazing. <laughs> they make you look like you have actual skill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some Nuln Oil onto the dwarf here and then i'll probably you know what actually i'm going to do i'm just kind of thinking about it i'm going to do the reichland flesh shade here on his flesh and then do known oil on the rest and not worry too much about bleeding through so these pots here you can see this is the thing i don't like about citadels is they're pots so even the paints are like this so you, you could sort of point or pour or scoop out stuff 
and put it on the pad where you know the other ones with the the little spouts at the top you can squirt them out like the reaper and all the other <laughs> every paint except for gw so we're going to go ahead and get that on there and then we're going to get it back tuck this back in here this is going to be really weird to do but i'm just going to kind of glob it on there and you can see at least i can see you can see a little bit of definition there you can see it just gets into the recesses there and so this makes it look like you went in and shaded all of those little cracks and things so you can see it starts to form up and it sort of pulls up in those little crevices so right away his skin looks a little bit better i mean let's just put some on his face there let's, you know just kind of brush it on there so there you know it's it's a little bit heavy on that one side but you can start to see the expression in his in his face and in his eyes so we're going to go ahead and just kind of coat this stuff on here a little bit and you can just easily sort of wipe it away on the uh, the raised edges there. And it just kind of let it pool up. And I'm gonna have to touch up that hair. You can see it kind of creep up into the white area there. But there, I mean, his face looks much, much better now. So we'll just get some on the arms here, on the fingers. So it's gonna give better definition to, uh, you know, the cracks and the knuckles and all that stuff. And I'm gonna have to go back and certainly touch some of the stuff up. But, so bam, there you go. Now you're starting to get a little bit of definition there on his body. And now we're gonna close this up. We've washed our brush, now we're gonna use the Nuln oil everywhere else. So we'll just kinda of coat it here on the statue first of all. So you can see this kind of immediate type of thing there. It's kind of casting a little bit of shadow on it there. Let's get a little bit more. Just kinda of flop it on there. I don't want the shadow to be dark anyway. There, so you can see it's got a nice a little bit more definition to it. So we'll get some more in here. And I will just coat some on his beard here, or his hair. So we'll just kind of get this on there. Like this. And it's a little bit dark, but we can go ahead and clean that up a little bit. Let's just get some on there first. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some on the, the axes as well, just to kind of get in the little crevices like that. So you can see the definition really starts to just come out. And you don't even do anything, just friggin' slopping water on there almost. Do this side. So we've got some of that in there. We've, you can see the little uh, detail starting to form. And now what you're gonna do, it might look a little bit sort of dark and maybe a little bit muddy in some spots. So the, the white here, you start to see a little bit, it's, it's formed the definition in the hair and in the ridges, but you want to go back over now and bring out the highlight. So there's a nice little highlight we can do on his top of his head there. And uh, let's see, uh, you know, we can see the, the ridges in his pants and in, in this ax and so on. So now we can just add a bunch of highlights, but now he's starting to look, you know, pretty well formed. Uh, so let's just go in and we can talk about dry brushing. Let's just dry a little bit because uh, it's a wash. It's going to take a little bit longer to dry, maybe an extra few minutes. So while I've been letting that dry, I've been painting, uh, my little squad here of liberators. So I've got five of them. Uh, I just dusted them with this, that gold spray and then went in and touched up the blue. But now this is getting pretty dry. Let's just touch it a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do is gonna kind of fix up some of the highlights. I'm gonna fix up some of the skin there. It's a little bit kind of watered down. Fix up parts of the hair. Just kind of being careful not to get into the crevices. So I'm gonna use that small brush here, this one there. And then we're just gonna kind of touch up the colors there in the different spots. And this is effectively almost like a dry brush. I'm just kind of touching the top of it. Now this guy is not really ripe for a dry brush, but I will try to show that a little bit there. So you can see there's a little bit better definition there, uh, you know, in his face and everything now. Let's do the rest of it here. Okay, so while I've been letting that dry, you can kind of see I did a little bit of work uh, washing my Stormcast there, a little bit messy, but just trying to get that layer down. I'll fix those up a little bit later. Now, I was thinking about it while I was doing that. There's not a lot of places to really go and dry brush this, but I do want to show that. So I'm going to take a little bit of white here, and just what you're going to do is you're going to get it on a stubby brush like this. Just get it really stubby, and then you kind of paint it. I'm doing it now on the newspaper, and you can even do it like on the bottom on your base or something. Just to, so there's not really a lot of paint coming off. There's almost no paint and it's all dry, it's not watery. So I'm just gonna kind of uh, just highlight just the top of this thing a little bit. You know, it's, it's, that's almost a little bit too much in that case, but 
you get a little bit of the stone texture there and then I'm going to just highlight a little bit on the tip of his ponytail there maybe just a tiny bit off there off the top of the so just add a little bit of a highlight and you can also you don't have to do just pure white but you can do like maybe a lighter version of what's underneath so I could lighten up that magenta get it very dry and then do it on there as well so I'm just going to kind of scrape this a little bit get on the edge there on the top so it just adds a little bit of definition there I'm just going to kind of do the edge as well right there so you can do a lot of edges this way and this may be a little bit on his hair just to kind of get that up just kind of hit him a little bit and you just you just kind of you know it adds a little bit of uh, definition there and get the little axes there I, I touched those up as well maybe a little bit on his toes just to kind of pop a little bit of definition so when you take a look at it there is that as white as I think it is oh that's just the his head is not that white that looks really weird it's just a light shining on it there now oh, let's just see there I may have to fix that a little bit that looks really strange it doesn't look that bad <laughs> in person that looks like it's pure white there interesting okay so I've got that so that, that might be the next step that you do you go through and kind of dry brush it a little bit and uh, and that just kind of brings out all the highlights so you've added your base coat and then you've added your wash in there to get sort of the recesses and the shades a little bit and then you kind of just go on top of it with a little bit of details and 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 uh, maybe reapply like I'm, I'm gonna go here and maybe reapply some of the skin there a little bit and then add a little bit of highlights so you can see even there on this foot that looks pretty nice there so that's kind of the basic steps. This is a very, very simple model, which is why I chose it. Uh, some of these other ones here, you can see, I'm actually gonna go and touch up here, uh, that detail there. Let's see if I can focus that a little bit. And there, so, so that's all blue there. So I'm gonna get a very small brush and paint that white, that little emblem there and so on. And you can get into the nooks and crannies of things. Your general sort of how-to, you know, one, two, three, base coat wash, and then touch up and, and dry brush. Um, that is uh, that's pretty much the steps that you you would do. So this guy doesn't look too bad. At this point, I would go and I would uh, uh, seal him after this guy dried if, if I'm happy with it, which I'm not. But what I do is I get a Krylon matte uh, crystal clear, spray that down on there, and that seals it very good. And then I'm going to go over the top of that with a Tester's dull coat. And because after you do the crystal clear, they look really super shiny. And I might actually leave that like on a blade or something. And then when I go to apply the, the clear coat or the dull coat, then I'll, you know, kind of spray away from it. So not much of it gets on the blade at all. Uh, so you might leave like a blade or a fire or something kind of shiny if you want. Uh, or you can just spray it down with the dull coat. So it seals it in really good and then you're kind of good to go. Uh, so that is that. And then I'll show a couple of other things that I've been painting uh, while I've been letting this dry. That's what you want to do is you kind of paint a couple of layers, jump over to this guy here, paint some stuff. And then maybe if you're doing like an army of guys like those, then, uh, you know, you can bounce from one to the other. Okay, I kind of just wanted to summarize everything that I was working on tonight just to kind of give you a general idea. I kind of did this sort of like a normal session that I would normally do, you know, paint a few models, uh, not just one at a time. Uh, so these are five of the retributors that I finished. These were a little bit less exciting. So again, I just spray painted these with the, the gold armor, just a gold spray paint, the same that you would get. Went through and touched up a little bit of uh, metallic there. And then also some areas you can see there with the blue on the back there. And then put in a little bit, sort of like almost like a white wash in these letterings and then kind of went back over them and touched them up with the gold. So I just did a few of these. These are very, very quick. And this is kind of uh, your, your sort of three color tabletop standard. So something I've come to learn recently is if you were to play, let's say any tournament, let's say a Warhammer tournament or something, they kind of expect you to do, you know, three different colors. So I've got gold, blue, a little bit of white there and some sort of steel color there. Uh, but this is a very, very easy to do. And you could easily just, you know, paint this way and sort of, you know, quote unquote, get away with this. I guess you can include the wash as a color too, because I did go through with some Nuln oil here just to kind of get in the cracks and then do some little dry brushing there and add a little bit of depth and layers to that. So I did these, these are very easy to kind of do. You just kind of would work on these, do a whole bunch of all the blue, let that dry, go back to a certain model and you know, just kind of keep going. Now down here we have the white dwarf, this is finished. And so you can see there's a little bit better definition there in the skin and stuff, I did touch that up. Uh, his hair is pretty white, which 
you know, he's the white dwarf, but I don't know that I would normally do white hair like this because it was a little bit uninteresting to paint. And let's see, I got a little bit of detail there on the back of that, but you've looked at this a whole bunch. There's his pants. <laughs> so this guy's now finished and this is kind of what he looks like. You can see the colors a little bit different now that I've finished it and sealed it, applied the dull coat. You know, you got a little bit of highlighting there. So it, the colors take on a little bit of a different quality, but not too much there. Then also, which I didn't show too much during the rest of the video, I painted these three uh, bloodbound. These are corn uh, bloodbounds that you can use. And now I am ready for Gore Chosen, which is a new board game coming out. Uh, unfortunately, these two, no, this guy and then this guy here, which I didn't paint last night, uh, are already in the game, but I didn't know that but I'll explain that more in a minute. So, but these other guys I think are gonna be expansions. I know he's gonna be able to be added and I think this guy. But this is the guy here that comes with the uh, White Dwarf magazine. You kind of get him bundled in. So this, these guys I all spray painted uh, red with the Mephiston red, which isn't quite corn red, uh, but they don't have a spray paint for that. And so I got to lo lock that in and then added several layers here to his skin. Uh, his skin is very sort of beat up. You can see there's actually like a little pock marks and stuff. So there's a few good different kind of skin colors that are sort of painted on and then there's a little bit of what's called wet blending where you know the paint's still wet but you mix in another color there and then applied uh, some shades there i believe i did i did i did i think i did ergrac excuse me argax earth shade on this guy or maybe it was the other one but and so i did his, his back there with kind of a leather type of deal you can see that skull there that looks pretty cool uh, so this is one of the guys that you can use in the Gore Chosen. Now this guy actually comes in the Gore Chosen, but I actually picked him up because you can also use all of these guys here uh, in uh, the Silver Tower, the new Warhammer Quest. This guy I really like, he's a really cool model. He's got that kind of skull thing and this weird sort of X thing there with a little bit of armor and details. And uh, so again, I spray painted him red and just kind of went over the top, you know, painted some metallic in there, went with a very small brush and kind of outlined these different armor pieces here with gold added this here. I really like this little skull thing there on the back on the sort of his shoulder piece there. That looks pretty cool. And that's just simply doing a, a bone color and there's a, there's a reaper bone color. So it's almost like an off white, a little bit brown, and then applied a little bit of Nuln oil to get in there to the teeth and the eyes and stuff. And that just kind of paints itself. And then a little bit of, you know, white dry brushing on top of that. And then on the back here, similar work around the edge. And this guy's really cool. I think he's called the Deathbringer with axe and stuff. Now this is the Blood Secretor or Blood Secretor. Uh, he comes in the Warhammer sort of starter box. I know you can use him in Silver Tower at Warhammer Quest. I'm not sure if he's going to be available in Gore Chosen. I kind of hope he is just because I can make more use of him. Now similar idea, painted him red all the way through and just did a little bit lighter of a skin tone compared to uh, this guy who's a little bit more weathered looking there. So just kind of did like a light flesh color on him. And then again, went through and highlighted a little bone color there on that. And then on the back, you can see the back here. Uh, but pretty quick, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, you get the solid color in there, paint a little bit of leather there, paint a, you know, a little bit of this. The only kind of real detail work was the highlights here around these little things. But again, you use that double zero size brush and just get in there and kind of do that. And I did, probably went over that maybe two or three times. So did a little bit to base it out, applied a big wash of Nuln oil all over, and then applied this again very carefully, and then did some dry brushing, some highlighting, and then kind of went back in. And that kind of acts as another way of highlighting it too, so you get a little bit more solid and shinier bits of gold in there. And this guy I'll just show you, because he does come with the Gore Chosen game. He also comes with the expansion for Warhammer Quest Silver Tower. But I know I can at least use three of these, so I may only have to paint one guy uh, to be able to play the full four-player game of Gore Chosen. Now, these two guys come with Gore Chosen. He is definitely supported because there's a new character card and stuff in the White Dwarf magazine. This guy I'm not too sure about, but at least I can use him in Silver Tower and also use him to uh, control creatures in uh, Age of Sigmar. So anyway, that's kind of what I did. So I painted, I think a total of nine miniatures because I'll take this guy because I didn't paint him yesterday. And so that would be a typical session that and the reason I got so many done is because all of these retributors here are like identical. Normally when I sit down to paint, I'll probably paint like maybe four or five. But if you got this kind of army thing, 
You just kind of knock them out. Honestly, did not spend a ton of time on this because I wasn't really going to go through and do exacting detail like I might have, you know, on this guy, you know, getting into all the nicks and crannies and the different parts of the suit and everything like that, you know, this little back and stuff. So that's it. Thank you. See you next time.